Well, hey, this is David in the Kaiser Warehouse. We're talking capos again, and we've uh, had a great journey just beginning at the starting point of what if I've just been given a capo or I just bought my first Kaiser quick change capo. What do I do with this thing? What's the purpose of it? And so you can check out session one on that, but it involved a lot of things just from picking ways to sing songs uh, in different keys to finding different tonalities and voicings on our guitar to even exploring ways that we play with other players or in a band. So be sure to check out those previous videos. Last time we talked about the drop D capo that Kaiser makes. And uh, this is that drop D capo. And you remember, it basically has a cutout over the six string E. And it's, it's done that way so that that E can ring while we have this capo on the second fret playing with chords in the key of D, but they sound like they're in the key of E based on the principle of drop D tuning. So we call it the drop D capo. Be sure to check that last video to learn more about that. Today we're going to introduce you to another creative capo called the shortcut. And the shortcut capo is very much designed uh, similar to the drop D, except uh, it got shortchanged a little bit. We've got the opening, the cutout to allow the low E string to ring, but also we've cut off part of the capo here so that the first and second strings also ring freely and open. So really, we're only covering three strings with this capo. We're covering the third, fourth, and fifth strings right now on the second fret. And so what it creates is the sound of an E sus chord. So there's an E sus. Here's an E to E sus. So that's the chord that this capo creates, is an E sus chord. So I'm gonna do just like I did with the drop D capo. I wanna position it not right behind the fret wire like we normally would with the, the, the standard quick change capo, but here we need a little space because we're gonna be creating an E minor seven using our first finger on the second fret right up against that shortcut capo so that we can get that low bass note there, which is technically an F sharp. So now we have it positioned more in the middle of the fret leaving ourselves space there. We have the open sixth string ringing and we have the open first and second string ringing. Now, if I just use standard chord forms for the key of D, I'm getting the sound again of that drop D capo, right? I mean, I don't even have any open strings ringing on the first and second. I'm just, I'm covering them up here, making the D form. So there's a D. If I make a G like I normally do, I'm still, fingering those open strings. If I make an A or an A sus like I normally do, all of a sudden though, something is different. It's this first string. It's ringing the same note as the note under my ring finger in the A sus. Or if I make an A, just a standard A chord, listen to this. Oh man. I have that note right up against that note, so it creates what we call a music dissonance, but it's a beautiful kind of dissonance. So if I played a regular D, I'm playing all of the strings because I now have the that open E to match this chord. Looks like D, but it sounds like E because I moved up two frets. You'll learn that from previous sessions. But here it is. There's a regular D. Here's a G. Now I'm going to do the A. I love that dissonance. It's just something that colors the chord and gives it this extra flavor that's like, mmm, that is tasty. Now here's what's cool in the context of using the shortcut capo. When I teach my students, I tell them, start losing fingers. See how many fingers you can take off all the chords in the key of D and find out what they sound like with the shortcut capo. So to illustrate, how about D? I'm gonna take my finger off, my second finger on the first string fourth fret, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to open up the first string completely. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, it's imitating the same note that's on the second string. They're identical. Okay, so since I've got two of those, 
I'm gonna just go ahead and take off my ring finger off the second. So now I only have one finger down. It's the finger on the third string, fourth fret. Let's see what it sounds like. Sounds great. Here's the regular D. But here's also a D. Because all of those notes fit. They sound right. They fit the D chord. So I'm just gonna use a one finger D chord for right now. So there it is. Now let's do the G chord same way. Let's lose some fingers. So here's G. A lot of times I don't play the fifth string on my G. I leave this finger to do a little bit of embellishment. So you're gonna see this finger off right now. So my G, second finger is on the sixth string, fifth fret, and I actually have what I call a little finger flab hanging over on the fifth string to mute it, okay? So I'm getting this. Here's the normal G. But I'm gonna take the finger off of the first string. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, I'm doubling the second string again. So I'm gonna remove the finger that's on the second string. Let's see what we get. That's a cool sound. So now I'm literally doing a one finger G chord because I've muted the fifth string. I don't want to hear this. I don't know, I don't want that. So but that, that's cool. So here's my one finger D. Here's the one finger G. Love that. Well, what's my other major chord in the key of D? A, so here, let's make an A chord. We already have that dissonance we talked about. Let's lose the second string finger as well. We're gonna open up first and second. Let's hear it. It's nice. Let's lose the middle finger. Okay, here we go. Ah, kinda sounds a little like an A7 chord. So let's use that. That's gonna be our A chord. So here's our D chord. I'm using my first finger on the third string, fourth fret. My A chord will be fourth string, fourth fret, just a single finger. And then I'm gonna to go to the sixth string for my G chord, which is on the sixth string, fifth fret. Let's play in this order. Let's go D, G, A a few times. Here we go. C, G, A, and D. Now, Let's stop and talk real quick about being a good bass player. Yeah, being a good bass player. If you are an acoustic player, you always wanna think about how can I be a good bass player too? Meaning, I wanna make sure I'm playing the right strings, but I'm leaving out the ones that don't need to be played in the context of a chord. So when I'm playing this D, I want this low bass note. It's an E, but my D form, even though it looks like a D, sounds like E, right? So I want that D. On the G, I want the G that low. But when I go to the A, I want my fifth string down. I'm not playing that sixth string. It sounds good, but I want to hear the bass movement. really just by muting the sixth string. I call that insurance, not an excuse. Insurance, just in case I hit it, but it's not an excuse to not try to be accurate in attacking the fifth string bass note and playing it for my A. So that's a cool sound. Let's talk about a couple of other chord forms that you could use in the key of D. Here's the D, the G, the A. A common minor chord in the key of D is B minor or B minor seven. Here's a little quick form of B minor seven that I use. So I've got it there, but I could, let's lose a finger. Losing the finger again. Okay, that kind of lost its minor flavor. So I'm gonna put my second finger back down because that sounds a little bit more like a four chord, a G over B. So this is gonna be my B minor, okay? And then we talked about our E minor looks like this. I can either make an E minor with these two fingers and fret at the second fret, right next to the shortcut, or I can take the pinky off and it gives me kind of a, a minor seven sound. So here's D, E minor seven, 
Let's go to G, to A, and B minor. All right, beautiful chords. Let me just play a progression with those and we'll begin to wrap this session up. One little quick thing that I did there that you'll find really fun to mess with is just moving from those one finger chords from the fourth fret up to the sixth. I love to do that strumming these chords. See how far you can go up the neck with it. All those open strings just give all this beautiful tone. You can even play up here on the first string. Sorry for that click. my creative juices going and just like on the drop D if you decide well hey I'm in the key of E but I really need to be in the key of G okay just remember the idea is if I'm in the key of G and I want to use a capo to play in a different position capo 5 in the key of D works for the key of G but you're like well what about all those open strings that sounds bleh. okay well, here we go we bring in our full quick change capo we go back two frets from it, and now we're in the key of G. Crazy fun. I could do this all day long. When I bought my first uh, shortcut capo, I just started experimenting. Made a lot of mistakes, but then I found a lot of wins that I use in my playing all the time. And so order one today or go buy one at your local music retailer and get creative using the shortcut capo.